Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining me for another Facebook Live. My name is Ginger Manley, and today I'm going to be talking about diploma options here in the state of Florida. There have been some uh, changes in legislation that affect our students with disabilities, um, especially our students that are on IEPs. And so I wanted to talk about that. I know it's in so, something that's important for me as a mom. I have a 13-year-old and an almost 16-year-old. And so this is something that is, you know, in our lives and something that um, I know that I needed to familiarize myself with a little bit better. So I wanted to talk to you about that. This may be something that um, you're looking towards in the future. Your children may not be at this point yet. Uh, your children may be right in the middle of it. And so this is impacting you now. And I'm hopeful that I can share some information that will better help you understand this. So before I start, I'm gonna sh share my screen with you. Let me do that really quick. Okay, here we go. So as I said, um, today I'm gonna to be talking about the nuts and bolts of diploma pathways and what some of those options are here in the state of Florida. I'd like to welcome you. My name is Ginger Manley. I am a parent trainer with Poffin, which is parents offering parents information and networking. We are part of the Florida uh, Network on Disabilities. We're, we are the PTI for the North, um, northeastern part of Florida. So Poffin covers um, from Pensacola all the way over to Jacksonville and then down some. We are a family-driven um, nonprofit organization. We're a 501c3. Um, one of the things I really appreciate and love about um, FND is that all of the employees, the board members, the staff members, we are e all either persons with disabilities or like myself, we're parents of persons with disabilities. So all of this information um, is are things that we need in our daily lives as well and or impacts us. And so I really feel like when I talk about this, I can talk about it because it's something that is part of my life as well. Before I get started, I just wanna go over what we do not do is we're not here to act as attorneys or doctors or mental health professionals. Um, what we are here to do and what I'm here to do today is to provide information, resources, and support to you. So you as a parent or you as a professional working with individuals with disabilities, that's really what your um, PTI, your Parent Training Instruction Center, which is what Poppin is, that's what we do, um, and that's a main part of, of our, um, our mission and, and in sharing that information with families. So here's a presentation outline. Um, some of the things that I'm going to go over today, I'm going to re uh, review a little bit of legislation, what IDEA is, along with um, some Florida legislation. Um, going to talk about accommodations and modifications, what the difference is and why that matters. I know sometimes it's hard to understand the difference between accommodations and modifications, but we have a really great slide that explains that to you. Um, we're going to talk about age of majority and age of majority affects all students in schools, but we're gonna talk about why uh, that can come into play and why it's important to know about, it, especially for our students with disabilities. We're going to talk about the elimination of the special diploma. This happened actually back in 2014. Um, we're going to talk about different graduation path, pathways and an overview of that uh, and what those pathways are available to students with disabilities. We're going to go over the CTE graduation pathway. This is the newest pathway. And then we're going to talk about um, diploma designations and deferral as well. So let me start with just a quick overview of the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, or IDEA. And if you're not familiar with it, IDEA is um, what, what assists our students and what the law that covers special education services. Um, IDEA says that the purposes of Section 1400 in, the, in IDEA is to ensure that all children with disabilities have available to them a free appropriate public education or FAPE. Um, and that, that emphasizes special education and related services 
designed to meet that student's unique needs. And, and this is the, what we're gonna be talking about today, is to prepare them for further education, employment, and independent living. Um, this IDEA, we're, and what we're talking about is part B of IDEA, and that covers students in kindergarten, through grade 12, so up until they graduate from high school. Once they graduate from high school, they are no longer protected under IDEA. However, some of the accommodations that we're going to be talking about, those would be covered under a 504, um, and that's covered under the Americans with Disability Act. So that means that if your student is looking at post-secondary school options, so they're going to go to college or they're going to go to a trade school or they're any of those different types of things, they are covered under ADA and they can have accommodations for them in school and that would be covered or at work um, and that would be covered for them under a 504. So again, IDA ends at graduation, but 504 through the Americans with Disability Act, those accommodations can continue to follow an individual until they, um, until they die actually, it covers them for the rest of their lives. Okay, so let's talk about secondary um, transition uh, individual individualized education plan. So transition services, um, as defined by IDEA, it provides a coordinated set of activities for students with disabilities. Those coordinated sets of activities um, are designed with an outcome-oriented process that promotes movement from school to post-secondary activities including post-secondary education, uh, vocational training, integrated employment, continuing a, an adult education, adult services, independent living, or community participation. So honestly, that's everything. So everything after high school, no matter what that student um, needs or is looking for or is capable of, is covered under IDEA and the, that Transition um, Individualized Education Plan, or that TIEP. So let's talk a little bit more about TIEPs. Um, in, so in the summer of 2021, Florida Legislature House Bill 173 added new requirements specific to transition planning. So, in this um, House bill, it says to ensure quality planning for a successful transition of a student with a disability to post-secondary education and career opportunities during the student's seventh grade year or when the student attains the age of age 12, whatever occurs first. An IEP team shall begin the process of and develop an IEP for identifying the need for transition services before the student with a disability enters high school or attains the age of 14 years, whatever occurs first, in order for his or her post-secondary goals and career goals to be identified. The plan must be operational and in place to begin implementation on the first day of the student's first year in high school. So under IDEA, IDEA says that this that transition planning, a transition IEP must be put in place for a student by the time that they turn age 16. So what Florida legislation has done is that has, to me, I feel like that has improved upon what the federal law says. So what the state of Florida is doing is that planning process and um, the initiation of transition services are to start when a student enters seventh grade or um, when they turn age 12. So it's going to start then. And then those trans transition IEP must be put in place um, by the time the student turns 14 or enters high school. So it's changed the requirements. And as a parent, I can tell you that I like that because I feel like it starts earlier. It gives my children more of an opportunity to attain those skills, to learn those transition things that they need to do, to put those in place, and so that they will be better prepared when they do graduate from high school. I just feel like it gives them more time. So that's, that's my parent input on that one. 
So um, we're going to talk about that Florida language. So the, the House bill expands requirements for the Division of Vocational Rehabilitation or DVR to cooperate with other agencies in coordinating pre-employment transition services for eligible students. The significance in education was the impact to, um, to this bill here and a change to measurable long-term post-secondary education and career goals um, to consider pre-ETS, which we're going to talk about, um, that went into effect in Ju on July 1st, 2020. So we're going to talk about pre-employment services or pre-ETS, um, and those must include um, those must include a what's addressed by the IEP by age 16 per Florida statute. Beginning no later than the first IEP, they must be um, in effect when the student attains the age of 16. So let's go through and talk more about Florida law. Um, well, let's talk about, actually, let me back up a little bit and let's talk about um, accommodations versus um, modifications. So it, it's important to know the difference between those two um, because what they do are different. So accommodations adjust the way that a student learns and or is tested, how they, how they access that education. Accommodations do not change the standards or the expectations that are permitted under IDEA or ADA or 504s. So it just is a way that that student accesses that education, it changes that. So an example of an accommodation could be that a student gets extended time um, taking their test because that's something that they need. Or um, another accommodation could be that like for word questions, instead of the student doing every word question, they are required to do every other word question. Um, Accommodation could be providing speech to te text for a student. It could be um, providing um, assistive technology to assist a student. It could be um, uh, different types of things like that. So it doesn't change what the student's learning. It's changing how they're accessing that and, and adjust the way um, that they're, they learn and they're, that they're tested modifications are different because that changes the content of what the student will learn or is expected to learn. Modifications are allowed for students that have significant cognitive disabilities. And these are only considered after all accommodations and services were provided. So the first thing that is put into effect for a student that has a disability and needs special education is accommodations. What can we do with accommodations to assist the student? What services and supports can we put in place to assist the student? And then if that is not working, then the talk about modifications may come into play. Uh, and again, it's only for students with uh, significant cognitive disabilities. Because, for example, with a modification, a 10th grade student may only be completing third grade level work. They've, they've, made a com they've made modifications in the curriculum. Um, so the student is not learning the same that um, their peers are learning. They're learning at a completely different level. They may be learning a different, um, the, the, that curriculum has changed to an extent that it's not the same as what's expected of the other students. It's put on a level where that student can understand it. So it is completely changed from, from like what everyone else in that class is learning. So let's talk about what age of majority is. And I've, I've talked about this before and our children are always going to be our babies. However, our children are going to become adults. And that happens when here in Florida, when a child turns 18. So when a child turns 18, that's when they reach age of majority and they are considered an adult. That means they have all the rights um, in their decision-making, everything transfers from parents now to the student. And for some students, that's fine. And for other students, especially I know I'm talking about mine, um, that may not work 
for them. That may not work for him. He needs some additional help. Um, he needs some assistance with um, his decision making. And these are all things that this is a conversation that you need to have with your student and within your family as well. So we want to make sure that parents are informed so that you're aware of this. Um, of course, we want our children to be as self-sufficient as possible. Um, we really encourage you to um, look at those supported decision-making options. And, you know, we, we want our children to, um, to make those decisions themselves. Uh, we want them to um, advocate for themselves and to, to be able to make those choices. But we as parents need to, to be aware of this as well. Um, so things to know is that um, in the school year that your student turns 17, the school must notify both you and the student, and, and they must um, talk to you about um, transfer of rights at age 18. Um, then the year that the student turns 18, the school is required to send you a separate and distinct notice of the transfer of rights. And then on the student's 18th birthday, they gain all of their legal rights as an adult, again, whether or not they have a disability or not. So best practices encourage the um, school districts to continue to work closely with the parents to ensure that appropriate decisions are made. However, all decisions are that of the adult age student and that includes supports and services on the IEP diploma um, options as et cetera. Um, it is the adult age student signature that makes the IEP a legal binding document. If a parent wants to retain certain rights, if that's appropriate um, due to the severity or the nature of the student's disability, that process occurs through the court system. Um, we're talking about um, guardianship or guardianship advocacy or different and, and that type of thing. And that has to be done before the student turns 18. Um, and I will provide you with all of the links, including links for age of majority. I'll have those in the comments below. So if you'd like more information on that, um, the links will be in a comment below. Sorry, I'm having clicked the wrong button and now I can't get it to move forward. Okay. So let's start with, um, with diploma options. We're gonna talk about that. So legislation, oops, push too many bu buttons, I guess. Legislation passed in Florida during the 2014 um, session. And during that time, they repealed the special diploma. Um, and, and then also it's required that the State Board of Education create rules regarding additional ways in which students with disabilities may earn a standard diploma. So we're going to talk about that. So what are the options? And again, the links for this are going to be in the comments below. So there's a lot of different things that are available or different pathways that are available. All students, all students are working to earn a standard diploma but there are multiple pathways to a standard diploma and it's you know, up to you and your student and in some cases the IEP team, if your student has an IEP team, to decide what that pathway is going to be and how that student is going to get there. So there are different paths to choose to get to graduation. Um, all 24 credit pathways are also available to be made in 18 credit pathways and we're gonna talk more about that in just a minute. The 24 st um, credit standard diploma is what most of us are aware of. That's the standard one. That's what most students are getting. Um, and then I also in the comments have a link to the Florida Department of Education's um, diploma options and the graduations pathway chart, as well as an academic advisement flyer. So there's a lot of really good information in that. If you'll click on the links in the comment, um, you'll have access to that as well. Students with disabilities, so all students have um, the option for a standard diploma, diploma, and then our students with disabilities 
have two additional pathways which they can choose from. And then, and I'm going to go over those options um, further on in the presentation. Each of these pathways allows students with disabilities to be able to use career and technical education or CTE courses to substitute one core academic credit in each of the four core areas. And again, I'm going to talk about that more as we go along. Um, there are some restrictions that apply to that. There are some things that can be substituted and some things that can't. Students can only substitute um, English 4. Uh, they can't substitute English 1, 2, or 3. Students cannot substitute Algebra 1, Geometry, or Biology, or U.S. History but they can substitute any other math, science, and social studies um, credit. And again, we'll go more about, go over more of that as we go further in. So the, the 24 credit standard diploma pathway, again, this is what we're all pretty much familiar with. This is um, used most often by students, including students with disabilities. Some subjects do have specific uh, requirements but there are some that there's some flexibility in that. Uh, social studi studies has three re required credits, but lists four different subjects that you can use to get those credits. And some of these subjects require only half of a credit. Um, students must earn a minimum of a 2.0 grade point average, um, all required credits, and pass the statewide graduation assessment, which includes Algebra 1, um, and 10th grade administration of the Florida Standards Assessment for reading as well. Those are all requirements to get um, the standard diploma. diploma. Then there's also, um, we're gonna talk about this diploma is only for students who have a disability um, or, and who have an IEP. Students with the 504 plan may not choose this option. So unless you have an IEP, this is not an option that is available to a student with a disability. This diploma option can be done as 18 or 24 credits. Now, in all the options that we're going to be talking about, 24 credit um, uh, diploma, that should be the standard. That's what we're really looking for. That should be the default. Um, then the 18 credit diploma, that's more on a case-by-case -case basis um, as a student may require it. But again, the 24 credits really should be the default of for all students, but depending on the situation, the 18 credit um, diploma is, again, an option that could be available. Students with disabilities may substitute up to one credit in each of the four core areas with an, with an aligned um, CTE, which again is career and technical education course. The school district is responsible for the CTE course alignment. Um, the Department of Education is no longer aligning those courses. So each school district is uh, responsible for doing that. Um, each school district can also develop a procedure for course alignment. Um, so for English, and I talked about this before, only English 4 can be substituted. Um, you can't substitute Algebra 1 or Geometry. You cannot substitute Biology. Um, it is the only option that has a required, for, so the CTE um, diploma, it's the only option that has a required half credit of paid employment-based course. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about the requirements on that. Um, the paid employment has to be at or above minimum wage for a minimum of one semester. It can be, it can be longer during that student's um, high school years. And there are specific uh, documentation that are required for, for that, um, for if a student is working and, and they are going to be using it as part of their credit. Um, and an employment transition plan must be completed by the IEP team and there are required signatures. Um, so the parent, the student, the ESC teacher, and the employer all have to sign that form. And again, there's some um, links um, to some different websites to, with more information on that in the comments if you wanna look at those. Okay, so standard diploma pathway via access courses. This can be done. This is one that can also be done for 18 or 24 credits, but we're looking more at the 24 credits. Um, 
this is only for students with significant cognitive disabilities taking the Florida Standards Alternative Assessment. They must have written parental consent um, for this diploma. Access courses are based on access points, so it's aligned with the general ed curriculum. It provides differentiated instruction through modified curriculum. Um, it changes the amount of information that the student needs to learn. It focuses on the most critical content of the Florida standards. It can be taught in both the general education setting or in a separate classroom. Inclusion in the general education setting should always be the first consideration for students with disabilities. Um, and then the IEP team will determine the student's least restrictive environment. So through IDA, if you, um, you should be aware that um, students should be educated in the least restrictive environment, whatever is appropriate for that student. So they should be educated with their peers as much as possible. And that would be, in most cases, the general education classroom. Sorry, my computer keeps jumping and Okay, so there are some advantages and disadvantages of all of these choices. You know, every choice is not appropriate for every person. So it's something that you should definitely look at and think about. And it is a decision. These diploma options are a decision that needs to be made by the entire IEP team. So that's going to include the student, the parent, the school, the special education teacher, the general education teacher, um, and others as well. So, you know, that's how that decision is made on what is going to be best for each individual student. There are some unique opportunities, but again, there are some disadvantages as well. Um, the same standard as all the general education students um, are for this um, diploma. So uh, this is the same standard for everyone. Some of the advantages is that um, it continues to access grade level curriculum, again, based on the student's um, ability. Another advantage is that when employing, applying for um, employment, students can check the box for yes, they did get, they did graduate with a diploma. Um, they're eligible to attend Florida post-secondary comprehensive transition programs at various different Florida universities and colleges, and they're eligible to enroll in any state college or technical school with a standard diploma. Um, so for students, um, the disadvantages of that is that for, for the access points is that it's a modified curriculum. So this may change the amount of information required by the student or acquired by the student, I'm sorry. Um, CTE classes can modify the curriculum, but they cannot modify the tests and assessments for CTE certification. And some state college degree seeking programs may require additional prerequisite or remedial coursework. So again, the, dis the advantages versus the disadvantages for the standard deploy deployment via access points. Um, you, need, you need to look at those and know those um, before you before the IEP team makes that decision. So where to um, find the access points information and how to use them. Again, in the comments, there's going to be a link um, with more information so that you can um, access that. Um, some of the things to keep in mind is that this focuses on abilities and you need to remind your students that they have a modified curriculum, but they also have the right to ask questions when they don't understand something. Um, and then again, this modified curriculum or the access point requires parental consent, which is part of prior written notice. Oop. Serious, serious computer issues here today. Um, so the 18 credit pathway, which again is an option, but it it's not the default. It is an option for some students. And again, it's a discussion that needs to be had by the IEP team. The 18 credit option standard diploma, it's one type of standard diploma in which the academics are the same. Um, so, but what it does is it greatly reduces the number of electives the student needs to graduate. So they still have to take all those core classes um, on, for, on the academic side, but it's um, reducing the electives so um, 
so that uh, the student can still graduate on time or, or graduate in, at all in some instances. Both the online course and the PE requirements are removed. Um, again, on this, um, students still must have a um, GPA of 2.0, um, and they must uh, pass both the statewide assessments for graduation. Students with disabilities have the option of receiving a results waiver granted by the IEP team for any statewide graduation assessments they do not pass. So that could be Algebra 1. Um, and then for um, the, the reading classes, the 10th grade reading class as well. They can also satisfy the graduation assessment requirements by receiving a concordant score on the ACT or SAT. The 18 credit option can be done for any of the standard diploma options. So it can be done on the traditional standard diploma. It can be done on the academic and employment competencies standard or the AEC. Um, and then the standard access diploma, diploma as well as the CTE pathway diploma. Um, so this, the next one is a new diploma. Um, option that's available to students, including students with disabilities. Um, this went into effect the 2019 to 2020 school year. This is not the same as a CTE course substitutions, which is allowed on the academic and employment competencies or access standard deployment. Uh, diploma options. This is a, I'm thinking military, I keep saying deployment and I, I mean diploma, I'm sorry. This is a separate diploma option that does not allow for CTE course substitutions in English, math, science, and social studies. The student must meet the minimum 18 credit graduation option requirements. Um, so that's the 14 core academics. They don't have to do PE and no online course and no fine and performing arts credits are needed. They also must complete two credits in CTE, CTE courses, which must result in program completion and industry certification. They must also complete two credits in a work-based learning courses or two credits, including financial literacy. Students must pass the industry certification exam in, er, in order to earn the standard diploma. And you really, Caution needs to be taken. We really need to think about this when placing a student with a disability on this option, as it requires the student to pass the industry certification exam in order to earn the diploma. So that's something that needs to be looked at and considered for each student. There's no waiver for the um, industry certification exams. Most do allow for accommodations, but they are specific to the industry certification exam and in the field. School staff and families should look into what accommodations would be allowable on the industry cert, uh, certification exam prior to making that final decision about placing a student with a disability on this diploma option. Um, students with disabilities, they can be granted a waiver for the statewide graduation assessment. So that could be for Algebra, algebra 1, EOC, and 10th grade FSA reading. Um, and, but that is an IEP team decision. Um, if the student is unsuccessful at passing the exam with allowable accommodations, that's when that choice could be made. Students can also satisfy the graduation assessment requirements through a concordant score on the ACT or SAT. So let's talk about what career and technical education or CTE is. Um, CTE stands for Career and Technical Education. It's specialized courses within a specialized career. Um, other things that, they, that you may know it under um, from the past is uh, trade classes or VOTEC classes. Um, many career clusters are added beyond, um, beyond just the building and construction trade, hospitality and office skills. Those are ones that we all are familiar with, but there's other clusters that have been added to that. CTE emphasizes real world skills and knowledge within a career of interest. Um, it helps prepare for post-secondary education. You can earn a standard diploma and industry um, certification simultaneously. So that's a big benefit to that. 
Um, and there's a wide range of programs that provide a living wage. There are 17 different career clusters that are geared towards middle school, high school, and district technical schools in, in the Florida college system. And there is a link um, included in the comments below that has a online brochure of what those are. Courses may be modified for students on the access point curriculum, but certification tests or assessments cannot be modified. Florida is no longer offering modified occupational completion points or MOCPS. Um, in order to be uh, certified in a specific area, students must be able to pass the test. There is no exceptions to that. So here's some common myths about CTE. There are lots of misconceptions about this. Um, sometimes we're just not familiar with it. And so we hear stories or somebody else's opinion. Um, I'm just going to talk about three different ones, though. So myth is that CTE is for only for students who are not going to a four-year college. The fact is that's not true at all. CTE can also be a pathway to further post-secondary education. It sets a student up to continue towards certification or for their associates, bachelor's, master's, or doctorate degree. Uh, one of the other myths is that CTE is training for only one job. The fact is that that's not true at all. CTE actually prepares that student um, to explore multiple career options. It allows um, a student to learn about a variety of different careers um, before they commit to one. Another myth is that CTE does not build academic skills. The fact is that um, CTE and encompasses, sorry, both technical and academic skills. So they're utilizing both of those. It's not um, ignoring the academic side. So here's another, uh, here's a, a description and a visual of CTE to show why CTE courses are important. Um, we're looking at the, the green side here. CTE participation improves college and career readiness outcomes. It really helps that student be prepared, teaches them a lot of different skills that they would not normally be, or they may not normally be learning. Um, students with a disability who are CTE concentrators have better outcomes. Uh, CTE concentrator is a student who has taken at least four CTE courses in high school. Um, and the statistics on that show that 3% fewer students have unexcused absences, 5% or more are likely to graduate high school on time, 20% or more are likely to be employed um, after graduation. So it is a good option. Um, and it, it clearly shows that CTE courses will enable students with disabilities to be more successful. There are three additional graduation options that are available to all students. However, they are accessed less often by students with disabilities. So some of those other choices are the performance-based exit option, um, which is the high school equivalency diploma or the GED exit option. Um, you have to be, in order to uh, complete that, you have to be at least 16, year old, 16 years old. You have to be lacking credits. You may have a very low GPA, um, over age for current grade placement. You cannot complete or graduate earlier um, than their kindergarten cohort. It's not an early exit option. Students are preparing for the GED exam. Um, this is not considered a standard diploma pathway, but it is an alternate exit option. Um, there is the International um, Baccalaureate IB diploma, diploma, and that's based out of Oxford University in England. It's for highly motivated students ages 16 to 19 years of age. Um, it's a very rigorous two-year pre-university course of study that consists of three core elements and six subject area groups. Um, I will have some uh, link in the comments for that below as well. And then there's the Advanced International Certificate of Education uh, or the AICE diploma. That's based out of the, Ca the Cambridge University of England. It is also a rigorous pre-college course of study. It consists of six essential 
college and career readiness areas and four subject area groups. Um, you have to pass exams uh, and they provide for university credits. And again, there's more information with the link below. Then there's the diploma designations. There's two diploma de designations which students can pursue. There's the scholar or merit. Um, these are optional designations and they are not required that a student pursue one. So these are just additional options. They're often signified on the diploma with an extra sticker or ribbon um, denoting which option the student earned. IEP teams must dis discuss both options with the student and the family as well as document the decision as to whether or not the student will pursue a designation at each annual IEP. So this is in addition to. This may, may or may not be appropriate for the student. Where can you find information um, in your specific county? Because every county is a little bit different. You should um, schedule an appointment with a guidance counselor. And there's a lot of different questions you can ask to learn if this is going to be an option for you or a consideration for you. Um, ask about what's offered, uh, you know, what, what does my high school offer and do they offer all of those different diploma pathways or only some of them? Um, ask about what courses you need to take that would meet the substitution requirements. Um, ask about when the student needs to sign up for them and when are those courses available because they may not be available all the time. They may be during certain periods of time. Ask where the courses are located. Are they at that campus or a different campus? And then who are the teachers and get, a, a, you know, you can request a schedule to schedule a meeting to meet those teachers. Many districts provide CTE courses through agreements with other schools or districts or local colleges and technical schools. Um, so just know that. And, and again, those are the questions to ask to see if that would be a good fit for you. And then let's talk about um, deferring the receipt of a standard diploma. So this is an option that is available for students with disabilities. So, but once they take physical possession of their standard high school diploma, they are no longer eligible for a free and appropriate education, uh, which is FAPE. So remember, IDEA ends at graduation of high school. So once the student receives their diploma, they no longer are covered by IDEA, which then no longer covers, is covered by FAPE as well. Um, I want to read this first paragraph. A student must have an IEP that prescribes special education, transition planning, uh, transition services or related services through 21, and a student must be enrolled in one of the five specific education program options. Um, so that's important to know. A uh, student must be, or these different programs include accelerated college credit, academic dual enrollment. Uh, if a student is um, trying to accomplish an industry certification courses that lead to college credit or certification. If a student, um, a college collegiate high school program diploma, uh, if they're trying to achieve an IB or an I AICE, um, courses necessary for scholar designation or structured work study, internship, or pre-apprenticeship programs. It is expected that the majority of 18 to 22 programs in districts will meet the definition of work study programs. There is no, there is no need for deferral until the semester in which a student is expected to meet all of the requirements for a standard diploma. So deferring allows the student with, um, with a disability to continue attending school to be able to achieve one of those programs that I just went over. Um, sometimes it takes them a little bit longer um, because sometimes it's because of a deficit or, or different things that a student has. And so deferring their diploma allows them that additional time to complete that, which then allows them to continue to be covered under IDEA which allows them to continue um, being eligible for FAPE. So that's why a diploma can be deferred, but there are some specific requirements for that. And so that, again, that is a discussion that needs to be had in advance with your IEP team. So, so know that that's important. 
There are some additional resources that are available. They're all listed here on this slide. And again, in the comments, I'm going to have links to um, what I was discussing before so that you can have um, that additional information as well. Uh, this slide represents um, the different um, uh, PTIs here in the state of Florida. Again, Poppin covers the top part of Florida. PSN covers the, the western part of Florida, and then Penn covers the more southern, uh, southeast part of Florida. We also have um, our Family Star program, which is our parent-to-parent -parent program that um, also is for our children or our individuals with disabilities um, on the health side. We can provide a lot of resources and information to families with that. Um, where the other PTIs are, we cover more the special education side. We also have the FND Trust Funds and we have the FND Advocates Program. Again, I very much appreciate you being here today. If I can help answer any other questions or provide any information, or please feel free to reach out to any of my colleagues, we would be more than happy to do that. Thanks again.